Welcome back to the next stage of the 3.8 litre swap into the Mitsubishi Delica. If you've been following along, you should have your lower crank gear replaced, your cam sprocket replaced, and the two associated sensors replaced. You would also have the valve covers off the other motor placed on the 380 block, sealed and ready to go. We will need to remove the rear water crossover pipe. It was installed previously just to make sure that it fit, um, but to actually get the crossover pipes now to go to the front, we'll need to remove that to play with that bracket a bit. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the water pump off the original motor, the rear water pump housing and the original water pump. Now, when we replace this, the Delicate Garage guys recommend using the Deco kit KTBA099HP. If you order the HP one, it will come with a replacement rear water pump housing. You'll notice when I go through this that I'm not using any gasket sealant and I'm not talking all the bolts up. I am just test fitting everything. Once this is in the engine bay, I'll go back and I'll do a full timing belt job on this motor, changing the tensioners and all the other associated componentry. This is just the test fit to make sure that all of our welding, bending and fabrication is sufficient prior to sealing everything up and getting ready to turn this motor on. So we're gonna grab our gasket. I'd recommend replacing that gasket and we're gonna fit the original water pump housing to the new block. There's a series of 12 mil bolts and one 14 mil bolt. I should have mentioned before that before you put this on, you should be cleaning the rear mating surfaces, getting rid of all the gasket material and the little inlet pipe where the O-ring goes. Once you've got the original water pump housing and upper water outlet fitting installed, we're gonna to move to the back of the engine and test fit the crossover pipes. We now have the original rear water housing on the new motor. We've got this crossover pipe assembly here. Make sure you give it a good clean up and replace the O-ring. I got the part numbers from Mitsubishi and gave those specs to a local seal supplier who were able to match the O-ring for me. Before we go on with the next step, I'm gonna remove this oil crossover pipe just to give myself some better access. Next step is gonna to be to take this rear crossover pipe and fit it to the new block. You will find that this bracket is gonna obstruct it and when you try to fit it, it will not quite sit in correctly. Right, so that crossover pipe is in place. I've had to just tap that bracket. So I basically straighten the bracket to prong out this way, put it in and then tap the top of the bracket back around with a panel beating hammer to just make it conform to the back there. You will need to edge it forwards probably uh, maybe half an inch. I'll put a little dab of sealant around the base there. I'm pretty confident that that's gonna hold, um, but I just wanna be extra sure. So that is now in place and hopefully we won't have to take that off again. Now that the center transfer pipe's installed, we can reinstall our rear crossover pipe as previously shown. All right, so I must've forgotten to hit record on the next bit, but once your crossover pipe's done, just chuck your gaskets on and we'll get ready for the lower manifold. All right, so you can see here on the back of the manifold, I've just had to grind down a little bit of material there. This manifold is facing the opposite direction as it was on the 3.8 litre. When you put it on without grinding it, you would notice that it would come into contact with that center crossover pipe. Removing that small amount of material allows it to sit snugly. Once you have ground down this section of the bracket to fit, you can install the lower manifold. You'll notice that I've used some non-hardening sealant. This is just an extra precaution to ensure I get a good seal on the gaskets. You can now install the lower intake manifold in the reverse direction as before. Install the eight spaces. The manual recommends up to 22 newton meters of torque. Once you have torqued the bolts on your lower intake manifold, you can install the four spaces for the fuel rail. And install the fuel rail. Install the bolts that secure the fuel rail to the lower manifold and tighten. You'll notice that unlike the 6G72 motor, there is no fuel regulator here. 
The Mitsubishi 380 uses a fuel regulator in the tank, whereas the 6G72 uses a fuel regulator on the rail. Delicate Garage sell a remote mount adapter for this, or they have suggested to me that you use an adjustable fuel pressure regulator. I'll probably go down that path, I haven't decided yet. I'm now gonna fit the center crossover pipe. You'll notice that this bracket catches on the pipe here and will not let you install it. I'm going to cut a section out of that bracket to allow me to install it to the back of the head. I've now installed the rear bracket. I probably took a little bit too much meat off, but it should be enough to hold it, particularly when the front is held in place by the upper thermostat housing. I haven't installed the upper part of the thermostat housing yet, as I'm waiting on an adapter. You'll need about a 25 mil spacer put there to make sure that it can sit neatly into the crossover pipe. The Delica Garage guys sell one of these that is commercially available. All right guys, sorry, I think my phone died. So I'm just gonna quickly cover those few little bits and pieces. Um, we've got most of the upper engine back together. I mean, you should really be able to just smash through this. If you've been following me and you've pulled it apart, you'll have a pretty good idea of how it all goes back together. On this right side in this little balance pipe here, just remove that tab and don't do that bolt up because you'll need to bend it out of the way to clear. And when you reinstall your crossover pipe, you're gonna need to notch a bit out of the bracket so that you can get a hose on there um, and keep that out of the way. I might even shorten that a little bit to get better clearance with the hose. I have my fuel rail in. You'll notice the thermostat, um, the upper part of the thermostat housing, I'm gonna need a 25 mil spacer there to get that to sit flush. Um, so I'm having someone make one of them up. You can also, the Delica guys, the guys at Delica Garage sell them commercially, um, but I'm just giving an apprentice something to do. So we'll see how that one turns out. If not, I'll probably just go and buy that from them. You'll also notice that there's no fuel pressure regulator here. So the Mitsubishi 380 uses a fuel pressure regulator that's in the tank and the three litre uses one that's on the fuel rail there. Again, the Delica Garage guys, um, I'm not affiliated with them, but they have been super helpful in giving me some advice when I've asked them questions. They sell a remote mount that'll allow you to remote mount the fuel rig. I'll probably be doing what they suggested, which is running an adjustable fuel pressure regulator with a gauge on it. But for now, I'm just interested in getting everything on so that I can test fit this motor in the engine bay. So we've done most of the upper accessories now, and we're just getting ready to put the motor in the car for the first time and test fit it. So I've got the bracket on. This side we didn't need any modification on, so we're just gonna chuck it on. You wanna do some grinding to the back of this air compressor bracket. Um, so I had to take a bit of meat off here and here, and I just took a little bit off the outer edge of this frame to allow this bracket to sit on. Then we're gonna do up the bolts and mount the bracket. Right, so we're gonna mount the other side's engine mount, exact same as I've shown in my previous video. The only difference is, um, instead of the stub that I had here that I slid the engine mount over, um, I've just gone away from, from that idea. I don't really think it's too viable, so I've just found this. I think that might actually be a drill bit spacer, like a depth chuck, and then just this fat washer that I found, and I'll use them instead so that I can just run a standard bolt instead of trying to use that stud, and that way, um, it'll torque up a bit easier and I won't have to worry about the stud coming out if I ever go to remove this. So um, I can put that on and I'll install the engine mount on this side. All right, so I've got the left-hand side engine mount in, bolted that up. Now we're just gonna chuck the front plate off. As I've said before, I'm not putting the timing belt on yet. I'm gonna put the front accessory panel on I'm gonna make sure that the engine fits with all of its components. Then I'm gonna pull it off, I'll do a timing belt job, and I'll finish the major service off on the motor. I'll now fit the front accessory panel as previously shown. I've refitted the front accessory panel. This is just gonna give me a good idea of the clearance and how well the motor's gonna fit. The last step will be to adjust the rear bell housing and make sure that we can bolt it up to the motor.
you'll need to remove the knock sensor from the rear of the head and take off a section of this molding here to ensure that the motor fits in the engine bay. I use the backing plate from the same position on the other motor, which fit perfectly. All right, so we're gonna pull the bell housing now. Um, I'm only taking the front case off the bell housing so I can check it for clearance. This is probably the one last major modification piece that you'll need to do to get this motor to bolt straight in. So you've got to fab up that new engine mount and then just do a bit of grinding in this bell house. So there is fluid in here. I'm gonna pull that off. Um, make sure you don't put a torque converter back in with no fluid. Um, you'll probably see that pour out. We'll just um, chuck that in. So now I'm gonna pull off the bell housing. Um, there might be some blokes that recommend against doing this. They are factory sealed. Um, and pretty difficult to get off. When you pull it off, if you haven't drained your transmission pan of any fluid, there will be fluid come out. So they do seal in trans fluid. Um, but I'm just gonna seal that back up with some gasket sealer when I put it back on. Um, I'm sure someone in the comments will probably tell me what to do. I'm not a mechanic, so you know, use your own judgment when you're doing this. I'm just a bloke that's mucked around on cars with his mates and his dad and his grandpa. Um, I don't have any mechanical, formal mechanical training. I drive boats. Um, so you pop those eight belts out and it's actually, you're not gonna get that off. You're not gonna wriggle that bell housing off. So I've got, um, just from some panel work I was doing on my Mustang, um, it's like an eBay stud welder kit. Um, pretty rad. You can just weld studs on and bash them out. But all you need is a slide hammer. Um, I mean, there's other ways to do it, but I found this, um, I'll just use that U hook on that um, and just sort of popped it, you know, um, gave it a few taps here, there, 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 um, until she sort of come loose um, and now it's off. So I will pop that off. Alrighty. So we've got the bell off. Um, yeah, you can see that's a bit exposed, so that'll have to be sealed up properly when I put this back on. So you'll notice that obviously it's not very clean. Um, I want to give this a bit of a clean up, make it look all nice and shiny, you know, true JDM style. Um, so I'm going to media blast it. I don't actually have a media blaster with me, but I have just got, you know, your standard Ozito air gun um, and a trick dad taught me. You know, you just get a handful of dirt or um, whatever blasting media you want to do and then just sort of... All right, so we're looking at the back of the motor now. We're gonna to have to remove this backing plate. Um, there'll be a series of, I think, 12 mils. Take that off. Take off the backing plate. And toss that one. Chuck your original up. All right. We're gonna to need to see these little tabs that are on your original backing plate. And the reason we're changing this is because of the starter motor location. We're gonna to need to grind those tabs off on either side so that they're smooth and flat. So I've test fit the bell housing and you'll notice that there is a minor obstruction where these long bolts from the original 380 sump hit the bell housing. So I've just used a fine liner and marked that position. I'll trim that bolt and I'll have to grind the bell housing a bit in this location. All right, so we've just made some minor adjustments. We've grinded out just a little bit off that. Um, as I said, I marked that and then just cut across and on the other side here to clear this part. You just have to dig into it. I just used a bit of a Dremel and a, um, some grinding stones and just cut it away. That'll actually be completely out of sight when this is on. So we can bolt it up. And there you go. Test fit done. She's on. 380 motor. That'll go on to our original. I've got nice clearance there. Obviously just had to tab that little bit out of the way. This bit was fine. We've just um, rounded off that part of the head there. That bolt head, we we'll just cut it down. Just clears it. That's precision engineering there, mate. 
Buddy, Bob's your uncle, mate. Mum's your dad. There we go. She's on. Ready to go in the donk. So we'll put this bell housing... Um, we'll take the bell housing off, chuck her in, and then last thing to do will just be to cut off that section there. Um, and in she goes.